This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Jennifer Kirk. And I'm Dave Lees, and today we are thrilled to start a new round of interviews. This one with two-time world champion Miki Ando and two-time reigning world champion Javier. Another time now, Dave! Another time! Yes! And you know what? She doesn't have it one up on him anymore. I know, they're pretty say they're, even. They're tied. Yeah, it's 2-2. Two -two, yeah. So we'll have to ask him how he's going to one-up her this season coming up. But Javier was so phenomenal in Boston in that long program. Just the moment of the week, I think, for so many people. So we want to know how he's been training since then, what his plans are for the upcoming season, and what it was like for Mickey watching him win that second title. Yeah, I want to know, is he getting up on time? Is she happy with how he is skating? Because Mickey really seemed to be the one that was dominating that relationship. We see her at Disney World all the time with her daughter, so I want to know all about everything, and we hope you're as excited for this interview as we are. Mickey and Javier, welcome to the skating lesson. We so enjoyed chatting with both of you last season. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Well, Miki, we love following you on social media, and it seems like you're always having fun lately. We see you getting a lot of flowers from fans, and you're at Disney World a lot with your daughter. So we have to ask, do you miss competing at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a little bit? Watching Javi this season, like when he was skating in Boston, you didn't have any sort of desire to go out on the ice? Well, um, actually, I love to see competition more than before because I usually didn't really watch. He also getting mad at me one time, kind of. Wait, why did he get mad at you? Because he doesn't come, like she doesn't watch me compete, <laughs> like not even in TV, not even no nothing. So, whatever I finish, I talk to her. I asked her like, so did you like it? She was like, oh, I, I didn't see it. I only saw the scores. <laughs> Is it because you get too nervous or you just don't care? <laughs> You're like, that's his thing. I, well, I do care, but I personally, I don't really like see other skaters before, so, and myself too. And, well, I care how he did, but then it's really, first of all, it's really hard to, to see in Japan because they don't really show on life, like by life. So we oh, have I to thought. wait a little bit. Right, so I see like I see you page and see the score and everything first, then I see competition also. But then, yeah, I say, Oh, I didn't see, so I'm sorry. Then she, he's like, He's getting mad, so like, okay, I have to see at least happy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I start watching the competition, but I really enjoyed it it's because, um, especially the men's event, I think they are become really strong, right? And everybody that's quad like before so it's I I feel like more interesting to see competition but then when I see the ladies they are also great skaters now um, in US Russia Japan and I don't feel I can copy with them I'm done <laughs> <laughs> well we do see on Instagram though you're doing many shows so what's your schedule like I and mean, do you have any downtime it seems like you're always performing yeah, um, in Japan there is a lot of show from um, spring to summertime, and they're um, having three, two or three different kind of show. And we are doing Fantasy on Ice now. We're gonna go to Nagano tomorrow again for the show, and in the springtime it's uh, Prince Hotel on Ice, whatever. It's like Prince Hotel during some ice show, so I I go there in the springtime. And I really enjoyed it because this year I went to a lot of um, different city. There are more shows, so I'm keeping busy myself. And I also work with TV, but then I also want to spend time with my daughter. So as you say, I went to Disneyland in Tokyo and I really enjoyed. And she also starts skating a little bit, so she likes to skate. So. <laughs> Well, the last time we spoke, you let us know that Javi sometimes has difficulty waking up on time. You said that he never ran his footwork, and, you know, sometimes there was issues when he didn't text you at competitions. So how did he do with this this season? We need you to check in and kind of evaluate him. Go ahead. Me? Yes. Why? Yes. 
because there is a question for you, not for me. Who <laughs> <laughs> want me to answer? Well, I would love to know how you feel about it. Nobody. <laughs> answer the question. Was he was he on task with all of the things that you wanted him to do in terms of his training? Um. Well, <laughs> he worked a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Like, he <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But what about with your testing? Texting is... <laughs> yeah, you were mad at him last season. He you wasn't he texting texted. well during the Grand Prix final, right? Yeah, that was... Okay, honestly, um, now I understand a little bit more, like, He's busy because um, he became a world champion again, and mm -hmm. then he's really busy in uh, Spain, right? He have to do a lot of interview after the competition, and also between the practice, like he have to. Sometimes he have to back and forward more than before. So I understand how he's busy at the competition and whatever. But then, well, I get mad sometimes because he don't even say good morning because he say either I don't have a Wi-Fi or either I'm tired or either I'm busy. Like, oh, <laughs> but I'm a girl, right? I just get tired of saying like good morning, good night. We need those, hobby. We need the good night. We need the first thing in the morning and the last thing before bed. Help me here. Help me here. I got to... You have to like show it once in a while. No, like, every day, oh, Dave Lee. Every like single it. day, we need that test. <laughs> but then, okay, my point is like after the competition finished, like I know like when event finished and what's gonna going like what's going on after the competition. I sometimes call him like I wanted to say congratulations and like you know I I wanted to like just talk. First. I did talk, yo. Every competition you call me and you and we talk actually. Every competition we talk. Every of them. Because I remember you told me you have to talk to me and I was like, okay. So I did. Is it a satisfying conversation, Mickey? Like are you getting what you need from the phone call? <laughs> I I just wanna like talk first. Okay, right? so before he skates, you wanna be able to like call him not after only. He don't have to. He don't have to call me because I know he's busy. But then, when he after like he texted me back, I call him and congratulations. But 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 then then he's like busy with the fans, right? Which is like great because I I had also like my sweet fan and like I talk with them. I I going to have maybe tea a little bit like fun meeting. But then maybe after that he can call me back. But then never happen. Oh. <laughs> Javi, we gotta work on this. We need the call back. <laughs> but anyway, I am so happy that what he did all the time and I really respect how he do so. Now it's getting better. <laughs> well, Javi, you did, you did have an incredible season. You won both of your Grand Prix events and you skated very well at the Grand Prix final, but you had to compete against Hanyu when he did his world record performances in December. So at that point of the season, what was that like you what was that like for you as a competitor? Did you start training other quads? Did you start working harder? What did you do after Grand Prix Final? Well, after Grand Prix Final, I kind of sit down with Brian a little bit and just because with my programs, it was impossible to beat Yusuru mm -hmm. if he did a clean program. It was just impossible. Mm -hmm. So we, we just decided to try to add a little bit more difficult into the programs, to add one more quad in the short program, and then add one more triple axle in the free program. Just to give a little extra and, you know, to be able to to compete. Like, because Yusu kind of like, this beginning of the season, he jumped to another level, and then mm -hmm. I kind of like stayed back a little bit. I needed to give that that little extra to, to mm -hmm. Stay with him. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Stay talking, with him. Talking with his about that, we saw you at the Grand Prix final and you won by over 60 points. Mm -hmm. Is yes, that so. difficult when you are at a competition like that and you're just so far above the second place person? I mean, is that more difficult than having a competitor where you're head to head, like a Hanyu? Yeah. Um, at the Europeans. Oh, Europeans. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was just. Um, 
Uh, I gotta say, one of the well, the most famous European skaters. Um, they maybe didn't do the best competition, so mm -hmm. we saw some of the new um, skaters that they actually did a great job, and they also, you know, they 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 did deserve to be in the in the podium. But it was a big gap in between, as we saw in the scores. Um, that kind of shows me that I'm like, I'm like ready for you know to compete with the, the the rest of the world that i know at this point you know asia is uh is pretty strong we can't forget about patrick chan you know so it kind of gives me the, the the little push that says oh i can you know i can win um by a lot in some competitions but in another ones i have to try to skate even better because i know um, bigger skaters are gonna come yeah. mm -hmm. Well, throughout the year, Hanyu spends time training in Japan, and you spend more time with Brian Orser. Do you think that that's an advantage for you during the season? Um, you know, we're different skaters, and I don't... For me, either way is better. Either if he spend more time in Toronto or he spend more, more time in, in Japan. Uh, what, I'm really, I'm, what I'm really doing is skating and training, mm -hmm. so... The question, I think, it will be what is better for Yusuru instead of for me, right? I think my schedules are, um, we came out with a schedule and we followed the schedule all the times. Um, so for me, it's really like a normal life and it doesn't really change if one skater comes and goes. Mm -hmm. How often had you two actually trained together heading into the World Championships? Um, he did, I, he spent the whole time between uh, four continents and worlds. Um, he was in, in Toronto that whole time. Um, but honestly, I don't, I don't re exactly remember how much time because sometimes you have to go to Japan and then come back. Um, so it's hard sometimes to, you know, at this point to remember how much time he yeah. actually spent in Toronto. Yeah, we talked a little bit earlier about adding that second triple axel in the quad in your short program. So heading into Worlds, what was your mindset? You're adding two huge new elements to your repertoire under pressure. Did you feel confident? Um, I did. Of course, the short program was totally, like it was so much harder when you add two quads. And we kind of changed the practices for the short program uh, where before it was you used to do like full run through every single day of the short program where we kind of change and switch and one day we will do one of the quads only uh, other day we will do the second uh, quad other day we will do only the jumps and leave one spins we kind of change the schedule of the short program practices mm -hmm. um, and I did felt pretty confident going into Worlds with the short program and the free program is it was it was not that complicated to do that second axle mm -hmm. but I needed to because at that point I was so tired already you know I just needed to be much more stronger and that's what we were working on practices and we were trying to get you know that extra power by the time of doing the second triple axle. Mm -hmm. So it was just work, work, work. And, yeah. you know, as always, it, yeah. As always. Yeah. And sometimes it was hard, sometimes it was easy, but I definitely knew at the competition I will have that extra energy to do that jump, that's yeah. for sure. Be ready. Well, Miki, we saw you at the World Championships. So I think you knew as well as anyone how well that Javi had to skate to compete with Yuzuru Hanyu at the World Championships. So what was it like for you watching the short program? Um, well, I, I was in Spain too with him when he started doing like practicing two quads in the short and I felt already like he can do it. Like I felt good anyway. Then at the word, I know how hard and how nervous and I, but I never really get nervous when he competing, like when he skate because I, I feel like, oh, he can do it. But at the same time, Yuzuru skated really great. Like in the short, I, I'm like, oh my god, it's it's amazing. And then after that, um, before the free skating, I talked to Javi, like a little bit, and his feet were hurting too. So I was worried 
about not jumping, worried about his feet and like because he didn't show up the, for the practice, he just got off so quick and I'm like, oh my god, like yeah, they were freaking out. Mickey me, and my, my parents. <laughs> I remember Brian came to me. He's like, Javi, Mickey just texted me. If you are <laughs> no, doing okay, David, David, or David, David, David. <laughs> and David texts Brian. <laughs> So how serious was that injury, Javi? Because we know you missed a practice right before the long program, or there was difficulty between the short. So how much did that affect you? A lot, actually. I couldn't skate at all. Um, it was my the back of my heel. Every time I would try to bend, my heel will try, of course, will try to go up a little bit, but the boot will not let it. So the, um, a little bit of the liquid from the bone ago from the whatever it came out because I went to the medical room but in the we have the short program day off free program so I tried to get in in practice um, in the day off and I couldn't skate at all so I told Brian because it happened a couple of times before uh, when I was in Toronto I told Brian usually with a day off and I take an um, Advil I, I put ice on it and usually it goes away for the next day so that's what we did. Came in the free practice, uh, free practice. yeah, in the morning practice of the free program, and tried to put my skates on. The same problem, couldn't skate pretty much. Um, we took the the what? How do you say? Um, the insole. The insole. Yeah. yeah, we took the insole. Um, we took the insole. I soft my my laces a little bit to just give the foot a little bit more movement space yeah room. um but it still it still hurts so much so i was like at that point brian told me right and he told me a couple of weeks no a week ago he's like at that point i was so nervous because i didn't know if you were going to be able to skate or you know we didn't know it was so painful i couldn't even jump pretty much and when i went to the medical room they give me a little uh, stronger um, anti-inflammatories, and mm -hmm. they help me do um, a protection for that area. Like this, it will not touch the skate. And when I went to do the free program, I just I didn't feel it anymore. I I was I was you know so relaxed at that point that I'm able to skate. That I didn't really remember that I had that big of a problem in practices to skate. So That's when was, that training comes in. <laughs> yeah, it was That's a big right. release. It was, it was a big release. But then for us, it was so hard. Oh, like, yeah, because you can't control I, it. Yeah. I, I was there for work, actually, because one of the Japanese big sponsors were there, and then I did a talk show with them, and we spent time a lot. But then um, his parents are there, so I spent time with them. And when we figure out about injured, oh, my God. I'm like... <laughs> I was so nervous too, but then I had the same problem when I won 2007. Like I couldn't fit the skates and it was like heel and like also regret and, but then I skated good. So myself, I was so worried, mm -hmm. but then I can see his parents is like worried so much and like almost like crying and like I, I felt, you know, more, you know, so I have like, it's okay because in two, but I don't speak Spanish. Yeah, I didn't really speak English, but I tried so hard. Two thousand seven, I my heel hurt so much, <laughs> but then I skate good, <laughs> and I won. So he will be good, right? But then at the same time, I tried to tell myself. Also. <laughs> but then they're, after that, they're like a little. I can feel like they're okay. Like how we can be okay, how we can be good, and we he. Oh, his mom made a, not the French toast. What is it? Mm, yes, he just did like, um, um, like a the, Spanish dessert. Yeah. And a Spanish dessert for me. Like, yeah, yeah, for him to be like more relaxed and more energy. And like, I, but she, she couldn't go because she say, um, if she see him, she gonna start crying. Right? <laughs> so he asked me to bring it to him. It was really hard for them, but then after we cried so hard, like I <laughs> happiness, cried. yeah. Like after free, free skating, I never I cried one time with Daisuke before, because in Sochi Olympics, 
because I know like how hard for him to come back and spend like against the Yuzuru and you know but then it's different story like I because I know Daisuke for a long time and this guy <laughs> boy, like made like I don't know like I never felt like that from figure skating I I'm really like in touch like mm -hmm. he's in touch with my heart and everybody it was amazing competition how nervous were you while he was skating um you know why I was worried but then I saw him step on the ice the first moment I felt he's fine mm -hmm. like I I saw like his feet probably okay like I feel something good energy mm -hmm. from him you saw like so I was very really nervous I was I, I was believing him so Javi, had you watched the other men skate before you? Did you know? Mm. No, I did. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And you know, the only the only thing we can do is like sometimes hear the crowd, mm. yeah. and you can actually find out if the skater that is skating is doing okay, if he's not doing good, if he's doing amazing. But you don't exactly. You're not really watching, so you don't know a hundred percent what is going on. So I knew skate, um, I knew Yusu didn't have um, the perfect skate because I heard a couple of O, oh, you know, from the crowd, but I didn't exactly know what happened, you know. Sometimes you just step out and the people is like, oh. Yeah, they go crazy. <laughs> well, some coaches yell at their skaters to pump them up and some coaches are very calm. Nikolai always seemed like more of an intense coach. So what does Brian say to you before you take the ice? What is he like in those situations? Um, he always, I mean, he tries to, well, I don't know what exactly he tries to do, but <laughs> <laughs> he, he always, uh, you know, he always tells me like, you know what to do, one step at a time, um, and you know, you're ready. He doesn't say much more, you know, try to, you know, put every, because he worked with us every day and mm. he know how much effort we put into the ice every day. So he, I guess he is, he's trying to make us feel, you know, that we're ready, that, you know, that that, that moment is, is our moment and, and we have to enjoy it also. So. Well, you did skate the program of your life at the World Championships. So walk us through that performance. Um, I also got to say when I was injured um, and I didn't have any, any more pain, Brian came to me. And he said, just imagine it's a Monday, that you had a, a day off, that it was Sunday. And, you know, usually Mondays you have the best um, free programs. Mm -hmm. because you... So that was also, like, really helpful. <laughs> 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 just to have that in mind. Um, the program, you know, I have uh, three quads, two triple axles. When I pass the first three quads... The program is almost um, not, is definitely not as hard. And I just have to, to try to keep myself in, in one piece that sometimes is, is uh, you know, really hard. Um, I think, you know, after the first uh, big elements, like after I did the, the, the two quads, one triple axel, step sequence, spin, third quad, after that, I knew like my body already was like, you know, it was there and I was feeling great and I just have to go, of course, land my other jumps, but also try to enjoy because the big thing had, you know, already passed. Everything was amazing and I needed to also get more extra points in other things because uh, Yusuru was beating me in the short program for, for many points. So I was also, you know, thinking a little smart. I knew it was going to be so hard for me to to recover after the short program, but I knew if I had a chance, it was with a perfect free program, completely clean free program. Um, so after all the program, you know, all the elements, um, when I did all of them and I was almost about to finish the program, um, I was, you know, I was already emotional myself. Not because I knew I was going to win, because I had no idea. Um, just because I knew 
I had a goal. I put a goal in a hard situation and, you know, I made that happen. So when I finished the program, I was so happy for me to, you know, to commit with my with my goal and be able to perform amazing in front of the crowd also because it was Frank Sinatra in Boston and the people enjoyed it a lot. And, you know, it was a big moment, but for me, I didn't know if I was going to win or not. Do you feel stronger than you did last season after you won? Do you feel a more confident skater now? I did feel more confident, but that doesn't mean um, next season is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel confidence in every, as I always say, every competition is a lesson. Mm -hmm. And we're never going to finish learning from the competitions. Um, but, you know, next season is going to be a, a different season, different program, different competitions, different performance. So we have to, to try to keep ourselves even stronger, you know. It's gonna be. It's gonna be hard. This spring, we saw on Instagram. Going back to Instagram, you and Patrick Chan do side by side triple axel and mm -hmm. quad. So, how did that come about? That you guys decided to do that and tape it. Um. We because I, I was I did that before with Nam Nguyen when I was in the cricket, and when we were having practices, we were doing both of us um, triple axel. So I just came to him and was like, hey, do you want to do a side-by-side -side and we, we can do a video? And he's like, yes, of course. So we just, we just did. And it was like triple as it was the first try. So it was, it was when I saw the video after, I'm like, oh, my God, it's so synchronized. Yeah, it's, that's what I thought. Like, you guys, yeah. the timing was mm -hmm. respect. New yeah. pair team. <laughs> Very <well done>. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Then with the, with the quad, it was the, the day after. And... He actually came to me. He's like, hey, you want to do a quad toe side by side? I'm like, sure, why not? So it took us uh, two tries to, to do that video. So it was not bad. Not bad. Very good. Well, as we look <laughs> ahead to the summer months, what are plans for both of you in the upcoming months? You can move on. Okay. Um, I'm going, we're going back to Spain after we're done with uh, these Fantasy on Ice shows. We're gonna spend a little time in the in the beach in Spain with um, with Himawari, with uh, Miki's daughter, and a couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of weeks, and then from there I'll have a little time off. I will go back to Toronto to do free program, the new free program, and then a little another couple of weeks in Spain. And then I start doing the summer camps that we're planning to do and just getting back to work. Well, what are your goals for next season? You referenced earlier that you think next season will be very difficult. Do you think you need a fourth quad to compete with the other men? Uh, what are kind of your goals and your plans? I don't know. I don't know exactly how we're going to start the season because mm -hmm. um, last year we finished with you know, an extra quad and an extra triple axel. I don't know if the next season we're going to start um, as we started the season before. Mm -hmm. Do you Can train other quads? Um, I did. I did. I've been trying quad loop. I landed a couple times quad loop, but it's, I'm really just doing it for fun more mm -hmm. than for a goal that I have to add it. Um, I don't see that adding an extra, like a different quad, like uh, spend so much uh, time and work in an extra quad, it gives you um, that many extra points. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like if, if the judges system, if they said, no, if you do three different quads, you're going to get a bonus of whatever. Then everybody's going to, it will try. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a quad loop doesn't give you that much point than a quad sal. Smart. And you'll have to spend so much time. Well, Javier, we absolutely loved your programs this season, both the short that you did with Antonio Naharo, as well as the Guys and Dolls program that David Wilson choreographed for you. So what can you tell us about your programs for next season? What do you know so far? So what we know so far is that uh, I'm going to keep the same music as the short program, and we're going to change a mm -hmm. little bit the program. We're going to change the uh, costume. Um, mm -hmm. but Brian... David and I, we think um, next year is also going to be, you know, a, a hard year because it's going to be 
year before Olympics year. Mm. And they like that program so much, they think it has one a year. Not the idea for the short program. Then uh, we haven't done the new choreography. Um, we haven't worked on it yet. We will do it during the summer mm. when I'm back in Spain. Also with Antonio, probably, because I've been talking with him. Mm. And um, about the free program, we are going to be using uh, Elvis Presley. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> We're going to use uh, three different pieces of music from Elvis. And mm. it's going to be really cool. I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, my, we really like the idea. It was uh, David's idea. And I also like Elvis from from a long time, from whatever. So... I like it. I'm excited, actually, for this free program. It's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a quick question. How do we pronounce your name? Because some commentators say Javier. What is the cor correct pronunciation? Because I'm horrible with names. Um, Javier. 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 Is that right? <laughs> Javier. Javier. <laughs> Javier. Uh, no? It's like, okay. They almost like, make it sound French. Javier. Javier. Yeah, it's like a Javier. 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 Yeah, yeah Javier. Okay. We're good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, recently Javier Raya made news when he came out, and we know that he trains with you as well at the cricket club. So what can you tell us about him? Well, I mean, it's, um, I think it's a, a great decision what he did. Um, mm. just, I mean, people that know him... The, everybody already knew, mm -hmm. but um, I think it was a good thing for him, you know, to really show the world. He, that means he's proud, mm -hmm. and I think it's a really positive thing. And you know, I, I'm I'm proud of him. I'm proud mm -hmm. of him. Are the two of you close friends? Or... We are friends. We're friends from a long time, and we've shared so much uh, skating life, and you know, so much. Uh, lifetime because we pretty much start skating together when we were i don't know maybe eight nine years old and we were training in in madrid in spain in the same ring with the same coaches for so much time so we we're really close we're friends from a long time mm -hmm. well you've referenced it a little bit and we're heading into 2018 so when do you think for both of you that you'll start to feel that olympic buzz, like that nervousness, that nervous energy. Is it something that started to kind of creep into your mind, Javi, every day? And Mickey, is it something that you've thought about too, how you're going to feel when that moment comes? Um, it's not here yet, I gotta say. Um, it, will, I think it will come the Olympic year where I'm going to be thinking like it's Olympics. Like, this year is the Olympics. You know, I also try to keep everything um, year by year. But by the beginning of the Olympic season, I'm going to start freaking out, probably. <laughs> 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 and Mickey, have you thought about it? Um, well, myself, also I was thinking, like, year by year when I was competing. And I don't know, I think it depends because um, I never have a boyfriend like now, like who competing as Olympian and world champion and I'm just done my job during just shows or TV work and as a mother too. But then uh, also like I feel like I understand how he feel a little bit because mm -hmm. I through, um, passed through the same um same situation before um, and I think it depends how he feels too because I, I can't do anything like I can maybe support him or try to not complain him much as now <laughs> right and but then I think if he really enjoy the moment he's not gonna freaking out I'm sure because my second Olympic was like the first Olympic. I don't know what's gonna happen, right? And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, Olympics, and this is Olympic year. I have to do good. 
like we don't have to be like that. I, in my opinion, Olympic is the special moment. But then, you tell me if you're there at Olympic with the skates on and your dress on. You yeah, me this is just another another competition. What? It's a, I mean, I I wasn't like at the podium, like I didn't get the medal. But then, I wasn't nervous much in the uh, Vancouver Olympics. Mm -hmm. Like I just enjoyed. Like I know what to do and I know what the Olympic is. But then people like in the world. Not only our country or who is there, like whole world, right? Feel mm -hmm. the same. It's Olympics, and they enjoy it, and we have to enjoy with them, right? It's a competition, but then different competition. Well, hobby. It's like right. It, it's a big, yeah. It's bringing everybody together, so it's bigger than just a world championship because there's so many different countries. But Javi, you just you have to make sure that morning of the long program that you text Mickey, <laughs> good morning. That's the most important thing of the Olympics. Just make sure you do talk that and her. you'll be okay. I'm going to talk to her. A message doesn't, it's not, message is not good. I have to talk phone to Phone call, her. honey. We need the phone call, FaceTime. I mean, come on. I want to feel like he meets me. Yes. Only the time. Like before, oh, okay, at, at Olympics. Before my free program, I'm not gonna feel like I miss you at all. Okay? <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> yeah, it's, Keep it oh, real. I, yes, I, you, there are other things I, on your mind. I'm gonna, gonna be freaking out myself and thinking like, oh my god, I have a competition. I'm but not gonna be like, oh, I wish Mickey was here right now. No. <laughs> You're not supposed to say that out loud, hobby. <laughs> Keep those thoughts it's okay. inside. It's okay, we know it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Is it I mean, okay, Mickey? <laughs> I'm okay with that. I, I, I'll be there supporting him. Well, well, we will be supporting you both as well. And we hope that this time next season you'll come back on after a third yeah. world title. I mean, come on now. This has to be like maybe we can be a good luck charm after the yeah. Olympics as well. So we thank you for giving us your time today from Japan, making all of the time change work. So we wish you the best of luck this summer. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.